I heard that supercritical carbon dioxide could revolutionize the future of energy generation. So today we're going to find out by taking a look at a $155 million electrical test facility. At the heart of the Southwest Research Institute in San Antonio, we can find a modern 10 megawatt supercritical CO2 testing laboratory. This state-of-the-art facility has triumphantly accomplished its inaugural operation, marking its territory in the Supercritical Transformational Electric Project, or STEP for short. It's a collective effort of GTI Energy and GE Research, along with sponsorship by the U.S. Department of Energy. Let's learn a little more about this potentially transformative shift in energy generation. And we're very excited about the potential of this technology. The standard of living that our society enjoys is enabled by electric power generation. In this power generation approach, we're using carbon dioxide under high temperature and pressure in its supercritical fluid state at the aerodynamic cycle. So the really exciting part of this project is, is for years people have shown that this technology will have greater thermodynamic system performance, basically a higher efficiency. If we can increase the efficiency of power cycles, we can do a lot to reduce costs, reduce emissions, and just make cleaner and cheaper power. As we delve deeper into the STEP project, it's crucial to understand the science that underpins it, the concept of supercritical fluids. These are substances that transcend their normal states, existing in a unique phase above their critical temperature and pressure. In this state, they showcase the properties of both liquids and gases, making them highly versatile. Imagine a substance that can dissolve materials like a liquid, yet has the ability to diffuse through solids like a gas. They are compressible, allowing for density adjustments, and boast viscosities higher than gases, but lower than liquids. One of the most commonly used supercritical fluids is carbon dioxide, when CO2 is above its critical temperature of 31.1 degrees Celsius and critical pressure of 73.8 atm, it transforms into a supercritical fluid. Supercritical CO2 has a relatively low critical temperature which makes it easier to achieve and maintain supercritical conditions. Its properties can be easily tuned by adjusting the pressure and temperature, making it highly adaptable for various uses. It also possesses excellent solvent properties that can be adjusted to be either polar or nonpolar, depending on the application. This understanding of supercritical fluids, particularly CO2, sets the stage for appreciating the technological leap that the STEP project represents in the realm of power generation. The STEP project is no ordinary initiative. It's laying the groundwork for power generation that is more efficient and has a smaller footprint. Unlike conventional power plants that use steam as the thermal medium in power cycles, STEP is designed to use high temperature and pressure supercritical CO2. This can increase efficiency by as much as 10% due to its favorable thermodynamic properties. This efficiency allows STEP turbo machinery to be approximately one-tenth the size of conventional power plant components. Imagine a desk-sized turbine powering up to 10,000 homes while operating at 700 degrees Celsius. That's 200 degrees hotter and 100 times more electricity than the 100 kilowatt CO2 plant, now operating at Sandia National Laboratories in New Mexico. The team will be looking closely at half a dozen control variables that determine how efficiently the turbine is being run. The cycle lends itself to highly compact turbo machinery, resulting in lower capital costs and reduced plant size and footprint. For this 10 megawatt electric project, the turbine is only about 3 feet long and spins at 27,000 RPM. It can respond rapidly to changes in power demand that can occur when integrated with renewable wind and solar power generation. Starting a CO2 turbine is a multi-step operation requiring careful attention to detail. It's essential that the right amount of CO2 is admitted into the turbine at the right temperature. Ramping up a turbine from room temperature to high temperatures and high pressures puts a great deal of stress on components. Thus, it's critical to warm up the turbine in a controlled manner, minimizing damage on various parts. A crucial question to consider is when in this sequence do you start rotating the turbine? Moreover, it's important to avoid having the carbon dioxide solidify, essentially forming hard dry ice pellets which can cause irreparable damage to the bladed turbine. Once the turbine is up and running, the next issue is how to balance the load on the grid, matching output moment by moment to the fluctuating demand for electricity. The insights gathered from this process be beneficially applied to concentrated solar plants, industrial waste heat, 
and next-generation nuclear fission and fusion power plants. The project will provide the technical understanding and characterization needed for larger scale supercritical carbon dioxide power conversion systems and help lay the groundwork for wider deployment. But what about the turbines of the future? Enter Tesla turbines. With their multi-phase fluid flow capabilities and absence of lifting surfaces for the fluid to smash into, they present an elegant solution to existing challenges. Tester Energy, an emerging name in turbine tech, sees the untapped potential of Tesla turbines. Our mission is to harness our expertise and pave the way for the next generation of test turbo generators. Tesla turbines are not your average turbines. They operate on the principles of fluid adhesion and cohesion, creating a unique dynamic that sets them apart from traditional turbines. But what happens when we introduce supercritical carbon dioxide into the mix? The answer is quite remarkable. The increased viscosity of supercritical CO2 dramatically improves the efficiency of the Tesla turbine. You see, the key to efficiency in Tesla turbines is reducing slip on the disks. Slip in this context refers to shearing losses that occur when the fluid slides past the disks instead of driving them. With the increased viscosity of supercritical CO2, these shearing losses are inherently reduced, thereby boosting the efficiency of the turbine. This unique combination of Tesla turbines and supercritical CO2 is not just an intriguing scientific thought experiment, it's a promising pathway that could revolutionize the future of energy generation, taking us a step closer to a sustainable and efficient energy landscape. The future of energy is not just about innovation, it's about reimagining the very fabric of power generation. The STEP project is a testament to the possibilities that lie ahead, with supercritical CO2. At its core, it's paving the way for a future where energy generation is efficient, scalable, and above all, transformative.